How's it going everybody? The first week of Cosmic Crucible Season 7 has wrapped up and we are already seeing some absolutely nightmarish defense teams make their way into Cosmic Crucible. We're probably going to start running into these. So I want to have you guys prepared and know how to counter these in that event. If you like this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's get into it. All right, we're going to start with what is being dubbed the Superior Knights Team Compliments of Nemesis Gaming from Twitch. I'm going to leave a link to his Twitch channel in the description below. Make sure you go show him some love. Great content creator, even better Crucible player, and we have him to thank for walking into this. But also, a lot of people are going to start doing this when we start getting desperate for defensive wins. So, what is this? Well, this is a melding of two of the most oppressive teams we have in the game as far as Crucible and War goes. And that's your Superior Six mixed with your Black Knight. Now, the uniqueness between this fusion is very interesting because they shore up each other's weaknesses in a very, very interesting way. For the most part, Skrull is an amazing counter to Superior Six. Well, Black Knight, a big Black Knight, this is going to be a Kraken-friendly defense, is going to come in and shut that down. So Skrull is not going to be able to get off his ultimate. He's going to die before two shots. With that said, it is important to note, do not put this team into Stage 4. Because if Skrull survives using his special to get offense up, and then he ults, that is bye-bye, good night, sayonara, see you later, to the enemy Superior 6 team, which would be your team in this case. So you definitely don't want to put this team into Stage 4. In fact, this is a Stage 1 defense, in my opinion, so you can get some interesting uh, shenanigans going around with those ability blocks from a Skirmisher Lizard, as we'll see later on in the video. Um... The next thing that the Superior Six does for Black Knight is it's a unique counter to Cabal. So the Superior Six team does not get vulnerables on spawn because of the charge mechanic under Goblin, which means if they get pushed low enough, Doc Ock gives them speed bar, they pop off, they do an extra attack. All of their attacks are extremely devastating. So it's a very, very interesting, let's say, match made in heaven, if you will. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey, well you just took a member off the Superior Six team, so I'm just going to mirror it with the full team, go first, and I'm going to get the win. Well, I invite you to review this footage of an attack that was done against me earlier this week, where an opponent tried to do a 500k punch down into my straight out of time team. Uh, and yeah, they killed my Starnet, they killed my Cosmic Ghost Rider, and it was going all good for them, up until the moment where Black Knight said, you know what, I'm going to kill your entire team. That's right, my six Red Star Black Knight killed an entire 2.8 million Sinister Six team. Let your head wrap around that. So I would not suggest doing the mirror matchup here. With that said, I will say that the mirror match threat does make you have to bring in Craven instead of Spider Slayer. The reason for that is if you don't bring in Craven, you don't get Safeguard on spawn. And because the enemy Goblin goes first, he's going to flip all your buffs, do tremendous damage to you, and it's going to be a bad time. So even if you do bring in Spider Slayer, Green Goblin is just going to flip that on you. And also, this is a little bit more of a nuanced issue as well. If the opponent on offense has the Awakened ability, then your Lizard on defense will steal the defense up that Green Goblin gives his team, spread it to his team, and the enemy Goblin would flip that. So it becomes even more of a devastating ultimate from the Green Goblin. So just keep that in mind. I don't think the Mirror Match is a great idea. Uh, but if you, if you are worried about it, so go ahead and make sure you use Craven as your fourth Superior Six member. So then what is the solution here? Well, Cabal may not be super strong against Green Goblin, but aspects of Cabal and what they give to their allies really is, right? So this footage came to us, and this was a way that somebody went ahead and beat this team. Let me go ahead and rewind it so you can look at what it is, just so we're perfectly honest here. This is a 3.2 million powered Cabal Apocalypse Nova team up against a 3.4 million powered Black Knight Superior Six. Now this is obviously an extreme example. Not a lot of people are gonna have Black Knight at two diamonds, but also not a lot of people are gonna have giant Cabal members. They might have a giant uh, Kang though, which is gonna be interesting here. But for the most part, you will have much bigger Superior Six members because they are all farmable. They've been amazing. Lots of content creators have been suggesting to build them up, myself included. They're an amazing team. Uh, so I do suspect that for the most part, generally in the community, a Cabal punch up into Superior Six would be uh, what is happening. So this footage, and this footage is shaky on the one shot, uh, may not be indicative of how things are going to go. Also, the Nova, so there's so much moments of RNG. Let's break down the moments of RNG while we go through this, and I'll talk about what team I think would just walk over this. Um, but it's an expensive, expensive team. 
So there you go. Lizard as a skirmisher does his special. Like I said, this is a stage one team. So the first moment of RNG right now, we see the ability block landed on Iron Patriot and on... Sorry, I just want to get rid of that white screen. Iron Patriot and on Namor. It did not land on Nova. It did not land on Leader. That's the one I want to point out the most. Um, I guess Nova would have flipped it unless Nova lost health before that, but I digress. Uh, the ability block not landing on Leader is a really big thing. And now that it's Nova's turn, Nova does not have his charge anymore. So he does not have that extra focus. You'll notice Nova, through sheer luck, gets that defense up off of Black Knight. That's not always going to be the case. And that leads to a very interesting moment here where Apocalypse is actually going to get to stun the Black Knight, which is not going to happen for the most part. Losing all of that resistance on Black Knight is an absolute death sentence for him in the face of Apocalypse. So this isn't always going to be the case. So right here, the Retaliation does a stun. That is that is not likely to be the case for the most part. So already this is a super shaky counter in my opinion. And then Apocalypse is going to one-shot the Lizard. If you have a really big Lizard and it's not a three-diamond Apocalypse, that may not happen either, right? But even then, the rest of these uh, Superior Six members are going to be really, really jerky to the rest of this team. They're going to do a lot of damage, wreak a lot of havoc. And so I would be concerned about this using this, this uh, counter. Here's the thing, though. Had this person put in Kang instead of Nova, I do think like a giant Kang, and everyone has a giant Kang if you've been able to farm him, will be able to take out that Black Knight because he's going to get the damage not just from Cabal, but also from Apocalypse. But then you've succeeded in doing uh, an amazing task. You've pulled the Kang, killing Masters of Evil. You pulled Cabal, and you pulled Apocalypse, killing another very, very strong counter. So I really like the Superior Knights team uh, on the defensive side. I would hate the idea of facing it. Shout out to Nemesis Gaming. If you want to make sure that you have all the offensive tools needed for your Crucible Adventure, you might want to start counting on seven amazing offensive teams so that if a team like this runs up you can compile a bunch of them together and still be able to clear the rest of your opponents this was very interesting shout out again to nemesis gaming uh link to his uh channel will be in the description below let's move on to the next nightmarish defensive team all right raiding with scrolls so we kind of got the rock paper scissors lizard spock out of the way when it comes to this crucible room we have Bifrost beating Pegasus but losing to Hive Mind and Extreme with Rogue. We have Pegasus beating everything but Bifrost. We have Extreme beating everything but Pegasus. We have Hive Mind sometimes beating Bifrost and then losing to the other two. I'm, I'm not sold on that counter yet, guys. But in because people don't like having to risk that sort of an RNG factor, lots of people are starting to throw a character like Skrull in with their raid team. And that makes a lot of sense because basically with these raid teams, whoever goes first and gets even like one kill, one snowball, that seals the deal. So Skrull is an absolute menace when it comes to this room. And so it's really, really, really important to know how Skrull's passive works. Because basically to win or lose this match is gonna come down to who goes first. Your Skrull needs to go first, rewind the enemy Skrull and go from there. If you're doing the mirror matchup. Going forward, I'm gonna be speaking as if the raid team in question is four of those members with Skrull, okay? So in this situation, I have my Void Knight. He's giving speed up to the four members. That's 400 speed bar. The enemy, the enemy Beta Ray Bill gives three buffs to his team. I thought that would be 1,200% speed bar. That was not the case. So as we see right here, the enemy Skrull goes first, and you might see, look at me right there with my hand on my head trying to figure out what the heck just happened. So it's important to note that it doesn't matter how many buffs a single character gives to his teammates, it matters that they do it in one instance. So Beta Ray Bill in this case gave three buffs to four members. That's not 1200 speed bar, that's 400 speed bar. That's equal to what my Void Knight did because my Void Knight gave one buff to four characters in one instance, his passive. However, my Void Knight also put a slow on the Vol, which made sure the enemy scroll was always gonna go before mine. I got lucky here, and my Skrull uh, did not get rewound, neither did my Void Knight, and so I was still able to pull this win off. But this is this is an example of not, not really understanding the mechanics behind Skrull, which could easily cause a loss. So what I'd like to do for the rest of this segment of the video is tell you the other characters that give buffs and how that interacts with an enemy Skrull. So let's start with the Extreme. Forge gives defense up to his entire team. Nightcrawler gives dodge to his entire team as well as speed up to himself. And Sunspot gives offense up to his entire team. 
So if you have all three of those members and one additional extreme member with Skrull as well, you are giving the enemy a total of 1200 speed bar, all right? So that is gonna be the team that gives the most speed bar to an enemy Skrull. Let's go Hive Mind next. Void Knight gives speed, Red Goblin gives defense up and deflex. So if you, and Void Knight gives an additional slow to the fastest enemy, keep that in mind. So if you have both of those characters on your Hive Mind team with Skrull, you are giving an enemy Skrull 900 speed bar. Now let's talk about Pegasus. So for Pegasus, Deflex from Ironheart, Defense up from Rescue, and Kestrel gives herself Offense up. So that's again gonna be 900 speed bar for an enemy scroll. And then Bifrost is Team Loki gives three buffs, but remember it only counts as one instance. Beta Ray Bill gives three buffs, but it only counts as one instance, making Bifrost give enemy scrolls the least amount of speed bar, right? So they're only giving 800% speed bar, which might mean that Bifrost with Skrull becomes the, the apex team, if you will, unless you start subbing out uh, members that give buffs, right? So if you were to sub out um, Kestrel, and I guess you'd have to sub out another member of Pegasus, then you could technically go first. The other interesting part about Pegasus with Skrull is that because they're all heroes, you lose the additional turn meter rewind from Skrull's first turn. So you gotta keep that in mind. But also, if you wanna put Pegasus with Skrull on the defensive side, what you wanna do is have Skrull in a corner and you want to have uh, Ironheart and Rescue in the other corner. The reason you won't hide Kestrel is because if the enemy comes in with Hive Mind, um, the slow goes on Kestrel, Kestrel ends up going last, right? Um, so that's, that's a bad thing. Uh, if they come in with Bifrost, then yes, your Kestrel will go, but you're not worried about that rewind happening anyway. They're gonna put it where they wanna put it and then you get your stuns off. So there's gonna be a very interesting new rock, paper, scissors when people start incorporating scroll. I'm interested to know how that's gonna go. Um, and do remember, if you see any scroll team that doesn't have uh, Pegasus with them, you could just Cabal it. The problem with that is that you won't have Cabal for an enemy superior Knights team if they have both of these guys on defense. All right, let's finally go talk about the other defensive nightmare that's already in existence, but how it's going to exasperate these two teams, stretching our, our offense much more. All right, then we have the uh, Morgan Dormammu Secret Defender Team, compliments of Jutsi. And this team, uh, it definitely is a, it's a team. It's a stressful team. It loses to New Warriors with Apocalypse. It loses to Superior Six. And some people will tell you they beat it with new words, but they may not be facing the right team. They may be facing the team in the wrong position. If you have Black Cat hiding Morgan in the corner, then you can't rewind Morgan twice. And then Morgan goes before Cloak, which means she'll put ability block on the enemy Cloak, which means he cannot put disrupt on the enemy Robbie. And then from there it can snowball and it can get absolutely nightmarish, okay? Uh, so a lot of people that are saying New Warriors beats this, they may be facing it in a favorable position or maybe they're punching down, whatever the case may be. This is not, this is not a solid solution. New Warriors don't instantly beat this. And so if you have to use Apocalypse, say against a Superior Knights team, this team gains a lot of benefits, unless your opponent goes super offense heavy and just uses uh, Superior Six on this, in which case it's a wrap, right? Um, with that said, so those are the three Nightmarish defense teams that are currently in the in the Crucible meta, if you will. If you have another Nightmare Defense team and you want to share with us, let me know in the comment section below. But for right now, I want to I want to bring to your attention three bugs that I have reported to developers um, that hopefully are going to be getting fixed very, very soon. All right, guys, it wouldn't be a Crucible season if there wasn't bugs to talk about. So there seems to be three pretty big bugs in the current Crucible season, starting with the Superior Six and Doc Ock. Let's go ahead and get to that situation. Um, they seem to have a little bit of a, a stealth buff that nobody knew about. So uh, they have built-in retaliations. I'm hearing this happens on all the characters. So you got to be very careful who you're attacking into. No word when this will be fixed, if it'll be fixed, or if it'll just get a text change. But once we hit this Doc Ock, eventually, you're going to see he puts a slow on my Noir, which completely changes how this matchup works. Uh, you're supposed to alt onto the lizard anyway, but I didn't. It is what it is. Uh, and you'll see boom, boom, and then it's going to go to hell in hand basic super quick. So that retaliation put out slow. If I were to attack Craven, that could be an offense down. If I attack 
um, goblin that could be a defense down, I believe. And if I attack a lizard and have regens, I believe he flips them into bleeds. So be very, very careful who you're hitting on the superior six team because they have these built-in retaliations for God knows what reason. The next big bug comes uh, worker strike, if you will. So this is going to be Greg in stage four, only in stage four, but that does reduce the value of this team, especially because a lot of people like using Undying against big black workers. So Greg is going to appear on spawn. And then he just says, you know what? I don't want to be here. And he's gone. He just completely evaporates. This has to be a function of the room rules taking away 25% max life. Um, no word on when that's going to be fixed, but they are aware of it. I have reported all three of these bugs to them, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to use our Undying in this Stage 4 uh, before too long, because that is a very popular counter to the Black Order team. And then the final bug is actually in the room rules themselves. At least this is a speculated bug, okay? The speculated bug is that enemies below 25% life are getting the 200% increased damage that Cabal members are supposed to get from the global rules. I actually do believe this is true because I've had a low life Omega Red one shot my entire team with his ultimate. I know his ultimate hits hard, but not that hard. I've had a low life Thanos one shot a three diamond Nova. I know his ultimate hits hard, but it doesn't hit that hard. And lots of people have been talking about Black Cat hitting new warriors when she's low life and just one-shotting entire teams. Now, Black Cat hits really hard, but I don't know if she hits that hard. So no word if that is an actual bug or if that is just bias of people getting their butts kicked. But I would not be surprised because there is a room rule where villains with Cabal under 25% life life do extra damage. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. All right, guys, I hope this video found you well. Hope you're happy, healthy, and having fun. But without further ado, I leave it to you. Bye-bye. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.